Welcome to the December 2nd meeting of the Zoning Advisory Committee. And um, I just wanted to cover schedule real quick. So it looks like most people re-accepting, and of course Elise not yet, um, can make it on December 19th. So we'll go ahead with that meeting. But on December 30th, I so far have four people who said they cannot make it. Um, and that still leaves us a quorum, but if one person, one more person cancels, I'll have to cancel that meeting. Okay. So, um, so for the moment, um, you, you, me, John, oh, John C said no. Um, Elise is still out. Mato said no. Sundar said no. So can you make it on December 30th? Currently? Yeah, currently you're good. So we'd still have a quorum. Okay. But if, but if one more person finds that, you know, something cam, comes up in their schedule, just let us know as, as soon as possible by email and we'll make that decision. All right. December 19th is the day you can't join us. Is that right? No, it's a good time. Okay. What was that day that you couldn't join January us? January 23rd. Oh, okay. John G. cannot make it. Okay. So on December 19th, do we have the upstairs room? Yes. Okay. So, town hall. All right, good. And on the floor. Okay, good. Well, yeah, I figured nobody else was going to be meeting. <laughs> nobody else is crazy like us. All right. So. Because Mike is here, <laughs> I thought we'd cover number two on the agenda first. So residential building permits for home improvements, consider um, how to um, change this to allow for um, more discretion, less, fewer things going to zoning advisory, I mean, no, no, zoning board of, zoning appeals. Board of appeals, and so on. So Mike, do you want to join us at the table yeah. for? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. the, uh, essentially, what this amounts to is if you have a, a pre existing non conforming structure and you want to add to it, if the addition <coughs> is, uh, meets all the setbacks of the current bylaw, we can just issue a building permit. Um, and I'm talking about residential structures only. Uh, recently, and we've had a, the, the case a, a few times, um, recently, a lady wanted to put a dormer on her roof over on Winter Street. In fact, she's coming before the board on Wednesday night. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the house sat on a corner. So the front set, because of the sprays is non conforming, didn't meet any of the setbacks. When you're on a corner, you have two fronts, and the front is the most egregious setback of all. Well, she wanted to put a dormer on the roof. I said, well, <clears throat> What you're doing is you're exacerbating nonconformity because it's so close to the street. You're making it taller. And you know, I try to I represent the people. If you think about the more egregious case of the guy down at the beach who has a cottage down by the water and makes it ten stories tall, so the guy behind can't see the ocean anymore. It's a, it's that kind of thing. Um, but we get a lot of these cases that are relatively minor and and. Um, a case where a guy has a deck and it's it's yeah pre-existing non-conforming, and he wants to enclose it. The footprint doesn't change, but what it does, if you look at the strict interpretation of the bylaw, he has to go to the board of appeals. <coughs> for uh, for our case, it, other than uh, schooling whoever it is going before the board of appeals, which takes about an hour and a half. Um, they have to get a certified site plan. There's some costs incurred there. The Board of Appeals requires architectural drawings and incurred costs there. It gets advertised in the Middlesex News. It costs anywhere from $250 to $350. So this lady is going to be into this thing for $1,000 to put a dormer on her roof with a house that's been there for 200 years. Um, so <clears throat> I was trying to define, and, and it's kind of a slippery slope given discretion to anybody. Um, if we treat everybody equally badly, they all go, and it, it just <laughs> seems to be a shame. Um, but if, if there were cases where, like the Dormer case, or enclosing a screen porch, making a room out of it, 
again, exacerbating the nonconformity because it was just a screen push report. Uh, thereby, um, the zoning enforcement officer, Chuck, could issue a permit um, if there were some standards, which is the slippery slope part. Um, uh, I think it would work better for the for the community as a whole and for the people that are looking for relief specifically. Um, it, 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 it came up when <clears throat> John was looking around for things that Zach should discuss, and it was about the same time as this lady came in. I said, nice, nice lady. And I said, no, this is the way it is. You got to go through this because da 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 da. And um, so <clears throat> I figured the, the committee could say, yeah, that's a good idea or it's a bad idea because it could be, it could be uh, used, you know, poorly. And, um, um, however, I don't suspect that would be the case given, you know, the current uh, leadership up at the building department. Um, Chuck would do a good job. Um, if if <clears throat> the board came up with some kind of things like a minimum or a maximum amount of square footage or something similar to the Doma case or the enclosing the screen porch and define those things, at least initially, it would give us a place to stop. It may never go any further than that. Now, should somebody come in and say, I'm going to put a dormer on my roof and you're allowed to give me a buy, it doesn't mean you're going to give every case a buy because, you know, the dormer could be overlooking the next door neighbor and the next door neighbor doesn't get to come to a hearing anymore. And, and that's the protection that's afforded the neighbor. Um, so, <clears throat> in that case, say, no, you got to go to the Board of Appeals. And they could appeal a decision not to give them the buy. That would be before the Board of Appeal. Um, and the Board of Appeals could ultimately give it to them or not. But any decision made by the building department, specific to real estate, is an appealable event. You know, if they get a letter in writing saying, I'm not going to give you this permit because they can appeal to the Board of Appeals. And people do. It doesn't happen that often, but they do. And then from our perspective, the Board of Appeals, being like any other public body, I'm okay with whatever they decide. Say, Mike, you're wrong. I'm okay with that. Mike, you're right. Okay, I'm good with that too. It doesn't matter. Because that's why they have a board. Um, but I was trying to avoid the incremental expense to the for the, the nickel dime thing that a common sense person would say, Jesus, why are we putting them through this for that? Um, and then of course the hard part is defining, you know, what these nickel dime projects could be. But, but I think you're on a gush board, you could figure it out. <laughs> and and um, well, you know. we figure you're going to give us some suggestions. Now. No, I, you know, I, <laughs> so you know. that we can banter back and forth about those. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Um, so you said this was just residential, and you said this is only for properties that are already non-conforming. Otherwise, they wouldn't have to go. Right. Okay. Do you have any idea how many properties in the town of Huntington <coughs> are non-conforming? Everything on the lake. I know. I know where I live is all non-conforming. Uh, most everything downtown. A street, is it as a, a street. percentage of the total uh, total oh, um, no. ha have the, any idea just yeah. to give give some idea of what this means in terms of guessing the older houses yeah it's <laughs> you know the older houses it, the it's older the, houses. the <coughs> non conforming <coughs> lots you know when when the zoning came in they arbitrarily set standards you know this much right. frontage this much setback that so it created a whole mess of non conforming structures everything downtown church street everything up this way a Street, B Street, down that way. Um, you know, if I had to put a guesstimate, probably 25 percent of the, the, Total the lots in town are, are non-conforming. Now, a lot of those people never go to the Board of Appeals because they don't want to do anything. They got to live in the house the way it's been for 250 years. Good right. for them. That's great. I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look at how to, you know, and and I don't exaggerate the costs incurred to the person going before the appeals. It's easily a thousand dollars. And um, and you know That's maybe more than that. maybe the, obviously this dormer is worth it. This lady to go, mm -hmm. dollars to donuts. The board of appeals will approve it on Wednesday night. There will be no neighbors coming out and say, "God, this is an awful looking thing. Why are you doing that?" Um, she's just outside of the historic district. She doesn't have to deal with the historic commission, um, but it's, but it's that kind of thing. And 
you know, whether we whether they come down with a solution or maybe it doesn't require a solution. Mike, it's a great idea. You know, you know Mike, we're not doing it. You helped me when I was um, <clears throat> putting an addition on my house, and one of the key things for my house was the fact that I got letters from my butters because yeah. there was a fight going on down the yeah. street, people getting their their um, view blocked and all this other stuff, and and I think that that would be sort of a credible part of it yeah um just to find out like is there anybody got has support a or a problem with it one way or another yeah. i don't know i mean is that is that a normal part of the uh process that yeah what what happened of course another part of no, the no, expense is if you go before the board of appeals you have to get a certified list from the assessor's office right. and butters and that's that's the cheapest part of it that's 10 bucks yeah but what about what about currently if they don't have to go to the Board of Appeals, if it just goes to you or no. to no, 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 nobody no. looks, no. nobody talks to a No neighbors got to get notified. No. Just like <laughs> you can cut your trees down tomorrow without telling your neighbor. Then, That's exactly you know, what has happened. It's uh, <laughs> in in that respect, it's still America. You can do what you want. <laughs> We're gonna lose it fast, but the, it is what it is. Um, so it was it was really for me. It was really simple. I was you know. Um, we're yeah. going to incur the time no matter what. You know, the Board of Appeals has a, a, a crazy application process. And uh, usually when somebody comes in and says, look, you got to go to the Board of Appeals, I'll spend an hour and a half with them out in front of the desk just going over the form. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I don't mind the hour and a half because you folks are paying. But it's just, in some cases, it's not money well spent, I don't think. But, um, you know. Yeah, no, so a certified survey today is, what, for me, 2004 was 1800 bucks yeah. by itself. The the drawings, architectural drawings, that'll be another couple yeah. thousand dollars for just base yeah. drawings. Advertising, you're right, it's like that's the smallest amount when contacting any butter. So. It isn't that small. I, for the life of me, I don't understand why, and that's probably because the state has to, says it has to be a, right. published in a... Print. Newspaper and general circulation. The only thing we've got left is Middlesex News. And I don't know if anybody buys that anymore. And why we're not allowed just to post it to the town website or post it to Pop News or something that actually people read. You know. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a big hit. Three hundred bucks just for that little advertisement this big. So I, I don't know. I you know I'm trying to help people out. I, I got nobody you know sitting in the wings waiting for this thing to happen because just like. You know, my experience at town meeting, there'll be a giant pissing contest in town meeting over this anyway. You know, like, mm -hmm. how are we going to rely on this guy to make a decision like this? And, blah, blah, blah. and I'm okay with that, you know. But it's part of the public process. So, the, uh, I, you know, back was when John was looking for things that Zach should think about, I said, maybe this is something we should think about. And not necessarily do anything. It's just, you know, it is what it is. Is there anything in the zoning bylaw anywhere that gives any definition to minor versus major? No, no. O only when it's related to site plan review at the planning board. There's a major site plan right. review. It's and bylaws. They don't define what a major project. Because the, the slippery slope you get into with this is what's minor to one person could be major to the guy next door. And right, vice versa. it's subjective. Yeah, it it's is very totally subjective. Totally subjective. Yeah. Is there is there any other town or city that you're familiar with? I know you've worked I, at a couple of other I, communities. I mean, jo John was going to look at look at uh, look at uh, see if there was anything. I'm not sure he found Newton, anything. Brookline. I mean, any of these places that would be Bro minor versus major. I worked major. in Brookline. Brookline, yeah. you go to the board of appeals, just take just, a deep breath. Okay, all right. That's <laughs> right. I, I, I had a feeling that that was going to everything go. in Brookline is pre-existing. But is there any yeah. other town that like we we think about having good guidelines to? Did you, you know, find what do they have? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. No. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Well. So the bylaw that we're looking at is 210-128, yeah. which if you have the 2018 yeah. book, it's on page 90. And um, if you have the PDF, it's on page 100. <laughs> so anyhow, it says changes to existing lots, uses, and structures single and two family residential dwellings so that's the only yeah. thing that it applies to yeah. alteration reconstruction extension or structural change collectively alteration to a single or two family residential dwelling shall not 
be considered an increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure and shall be permitted as of right in the following circumstances. If A, the lot conforms to the minimum lot area and frontage requirements in the chapter, lot complies, complied with the minimum area and frontage requirements in effect at the time the lot was created, has not been held in common ownership with adjoining land since rendered nonconforming, and has at least 5,000 square feet of area and 50 feet of frontage. So those, the, the last three are all within the one requirement, the B, you know. If it, um, so, so essentially we're talking about things that don't apply to one of those. So um, alt that then, you know, alteration to an existing dwelling which complies with all the current size and setback requirements and such alteration also complies with current size and setback requirements and building height requirements. Alteration to an existing dwelling which encroaches upon one or more required yard width or setback requirement. And God, I hate the punctuation in these things. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, alteration of a single or two family dwelling which does not conform to the foregoing circumstances shall require issuance of a special permit by the Board of Appeals upon finding that the pro proposed change is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, which is, that's it's that's the what the Board of Appeals finds before they, you know, issue it. So that's essentially the clause. Um, there's some more information about non-conforming structures and non-conforming lots and so on. Um, but I think that's, that's probably the main yeah. gist of it. So it would be, it would be changing that from a special permit by the Board of Appeals to, you know, to, to saying something else about certain changes, you know, it doesn't change the footprint of the house, for instance. These are just some of the ideas that we can throw around. Um, doesn't change the, the overall height, you know, because a dormer doesn't, you know, really change the roof line. It just raises the roof in one area. It doesn't change the, the full height yeah. of the, the roof, for instance. So, um, so those are some of the things we can think about, if that makes any sense to people. So, I mean, good. I like the idea of trying to make certain things more common sense rather than by the book. Could you could you just put in another section in there that says Minor you operation. don't need to go to the board of appeals provided you. Meet this criteria. Yes. Yeah. Get the sign off of. Yeah, I would. You I know, would, nine I out would, of twelve you know, of your for closest neighbors. For everybody's benefit, I would try to make it as specific as possible. For in the case of dormers, you wouldn't want it to exceed the existing height of the roof, whether or not the roof was conforming or not. Our right. height requirements. Most every house in town, none of them exceed the height requirements. So that isn't a big issue, but. In some cases, there are dormers, and there are dormers. There's little ones, and there's big ones. Mm -hmm. So you would want to be careful. Um, you might want to say something that doesn't increase the the uh, gross floor area, which is a scary thing. Calculation. It's a Brookline thing. <laughs> and and um, you might want to limit it to, to size, it was square footage. And back. Fifteen years ago, in this very same bylaw, this this language, which sounds confusing, is much clearer than the old language. The old language you used to allow them to to put an addition on, or expand it, or put a dormer on that didn't exceed a certain square footage or a percentage of the existing square footage, and and it was really confusing because interpreting what it was, how what the existing was, it was always difficult. Down at the lake, we used it a lot. 15 years ago. Madam Chair, if I may. Yeah. Yes, please. Looks like we have a data source with us. Uh, if the ZBA has gotten a bunch of uh, appeals yeah. and some of them have been approved, and some of them have been denied, yeah. isn't that a data source that we could tap into and say, okay, there are some common themes here? Yeah. Um, all the well, some well, examples. Ex so except that most everything that goes to the ZBA gets sure. approved. Okay. Because if a person, a reasonable person, yep. you know, somebody that lives in town, it sits down with Mike Shepard for an hour and a half and says, there's, I tell them there's no way in hell you're going to get it, they're not going to invest the, the $1, money or $1,500 right. to do it. Or the 3000 right. So <laughs> a lot of the work has already been done. In other right. words, they've notified the neighbors, the, the smart ones, and I tell everybody to do this, 
Talk to the guys on either side of you. Talk right. to the guy across the street. Make sure, because the ZBA will ask that question, and they do. So that's why a lot of the ones that go before the board get approved. Very seldom are applications denied. It's not because... Um, so why not we tap into that list which has been approved yeah. as a commonplace yeah, I'm sure this I'm and sure. make or may potentially make a recommendation. I don't know what those changes are going to be, but say that if it's in this categorization, whatever, 10 use cases, yeah. maybe the recommendation from this forum would be for language to be added, which makes it by right. From, from so, wait, hang on, just yeah. a second. John, um, the ZVA um, rulings, do they, do, is, are they in a searchable format oh, at all? I would and, assume they are. Do I? Um, I would assume Kobe's got some kind of okay. spreadsheet, but, but I don't know. But does it, does it have design information? Like what the, what the structure, Change, what the structural changes consist of? Um, well, first of all, you got to find most it. Of, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They might okay. not mention all that in the decision, and depending on what was submitted or how long the files have been held on to, you might not. You, I mean, you're going to be doing a lot of digging no matter what, but mm -hmm. you might not be coming up with a lot of detailed information aside from what's in the decision. It, it might be easier to approach from what has the ZBA said no to, and why do they say no? Are they saying no because... Five neighbors stood up and said it's a hideous idea, or because of something else. Uh, they're, they're, well, it depends on what what the people are before the board for. If it's just a special permit, which is most of this stuff, most of them get approved. Uh, generally, if a neighbor appeals and it goes to court, the judge, almost without exception, will side with the ZBA because they figure the ZBA knows the town, the judge lives in Brookline, he doesn't know anything about Hopkinton, the ZBA has got to be right. Um, but on the other hand, variances, it's just the opposite. In other words, with the variance, the, the, stand, the burden of proof is so high and so hard that virtually no one can do it. And, and so if a Board of Appeals approves the variance, that goes to court, invariably they're overturned because you didn't meet the standard. Um, we're not talking that. We're talking pretty much special permits, just special permits, and you know these minor alterations. But in, and I, I realized how to define minor is the sticking point. Yeah, Madam right. Chair. Oh, yes, I um, have only been on the ZBA for like four meetings now. Um, <laughs> one of the, but I've been very interested in these yeah. cases because they're, they are interesting to understand why some things have gone the way they've gone. One of the cases that was just passed was um, Hayden Row. And um, there was going to be, but it was, it was a commercial project that was turning into a four unit oh, yeah. residential. And the, when I asked the question, because it's not always asked, have you contacted all of your, you know, abutters, um, the fellow said, yeah, and the guy over here, he doesn't have a problem with anything as long as I give him sunlight on his garden. Now, let me tell you something. I would never be able to come up with that being an exception on this particular situation, which is why I'm finding this to be, like, I'm thinking of all the possibilities of how this could get really screwed up. Yeah. I, uh, because that's not something you would know looking at the site plan, looking at the, right. the plot plan, looking at, you know, I mean, that was a, a verbal between. And so the ZBA took that into account and said, hey, do we want to add some language into the decision? And that's what happens. Mm -hmm. It's not a black and white by a long stretch mm -hmm. <laughs> from what I can gather what I've been re reviewing. So, I mean, it is important to figure out how to shortcut these things so that someone who's not familiar with real estate goes, oh my God, I need this and I need that and I need that and like gets overwhelmed. Yeah. That's important. Everybody's overwhelmed. That's, that's, that's mm -hmm. you know, but it's part of the process. And, and, you know, and for a lot of people, it's worth going through the process. Yes, yes. Yeah. So in my and case, it definitely was worthwhile. You know, I, and I explained to it provides protection for them going forward because right. the special permit is recorded with the deed, goes with the property long after they're gone. So it isn't like, you know, the question is, well, how did this get here and when did it happen? It's all mm -hmm. recorded so you, at the registry of deeds. Sorry. So, oh, go ahead. Do you, um, do you lose that if it's at your purview? Huh? 
do you lose that deed tracing not ability? A, not if there's a, a two-line paragraph in this zoning bylaw book that says you can do it. Okay. Um, so you mentioned, Mike, that almost everything is approved at the CBA, but for special permits. But for special permits, special yes. Permit. For special permits. But that's because you've talked through a lot with He's them. done the work. Yes. Yeah. And would that really take place if people didn't know they had to get before ZBA and, you know, well, in this, prove it to them? In this particular case, for the lady down in Winter Street, and, and from a, you know, the, the house is no closer to the street than mm -hmm. there was before. The dormer is actually farther back than the front of the house, yeah. but there's no portion of this house that the whole thing is in the setback. Mm -hmm. So there's virtually nothing she can do without some kind of relief. And this one just had, it's not a big addition, it's just a dormer. And, and I said, no, I'm sorry, you're going to pay the so it's, You know, again, it's just a, a literal thing. Now, sometimes the literal, you know, interpretation is, is safer. You know, it's safer for me, it's safer for her, it's safer for everybody. But in some cases, for, you know, minor things like this, it just seems really silly. And, you know, to put anybody through the expense, and of course, then she's still going to do it. And, and, uh, but the, uh, I just thought it might be something we want to. Mm -hmm. Well, they're yeah. still going to have to go see Mike for a building permit. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. He still so. needs a building permit. No question. No, I, I understand this. We would like to get to the specifics of it, but to, to think of the other end, how, what kind of a problem, we, how much of a problem do we anticipate yeah. if we just gave a general statement at the discretion of the zoning mm -hmm. enforcement officer, it goes to Zoning Board of Appeals? Yeah. It is. It's just me. Yes. Yeah, so he can, he can say, instead of just does not conform to foregoing <coughs> circumstances and decided and zoning enforcement officer deems that it needs to go to zoning board of appeals yeah. then it goes yeah i mean well because you know this is all legal stuff mm -hmm. you know unless there's some exception mm -hmm. you go to the board of appeals mm -hmm. this lady's going she's going to be there next wednesday yeah. um but you know the uh and i was i was i was thinking of you know some creative way to to draft some language that would, you know, give the zoning of Boston. It's not me, by the way, it's mm -hmm. Chuck Kelly. And uh, even though I'm the one that does all the zoning, um, the, uh, um, it gives protection not only to the homeowner, mm -hmm. but it gives protection to the staff as well, because, yeah, it says here, I determine that. Da -da -da -da. Right, right. So you need it for both things. Yeah. They need it because some building inspector 20 years from now says, how the hell do you ever do that drama without getting any relief? You gotta tear it down. Yeah. And she appeals that and goes to the Board of Appeals and the yeah. Board of Appeals said- Right, no, it becomes a legal document that goes right. along well, with the property. Well, what it does is it provides protection for everybody. Right. And, and um, you know, and that's primarily the reason everybody goes. And, and you know, if you got a pre-existing non-conforming structure and you wanna do something with it, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Unless you can add to it, the addition meets the setbacks, you're fine. They, they don't have to go. We just issue a building permit. Um, but, um, you know, this language that we read in this first paragraph about 5,000 square feet and 50 feet of frontage, that's related to lots, not structures. And, uh, you know, a, a grandfather lot that's not held in common ownership with adjacent land that meets those requirements, 50 feet of frontage and 5,000 square feet, can be built upon. Um, we had, for example, a fellow down the lake that bought a lot that had 4,997 square feet. <laughs> oh, you got to let me build that. I said, no. What does it say here? 5,000 square feet. It's not only our bylaw, but the State Zoning Act says the same thing. That language is exactly the same. 50 feet um, of frontage and 5,000 square feet. But under two the two irony two. is he can build on it, but he still has to go to the Board of Appeals because he's going to need relief for all the setbacks. You know, you think of a house that you got 25 feet setback on the sides, and you only got 50 feet in front of it. You get the house is a pencil line. You know, <laughs> yeah. so they still have to go to the board of appeals. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. It's, it's just um, because there's also language which says here, with the minimum area and frontage requirements yeah. in effect at the time the lot was yes, created. That's correct. 
And then there's an and section which says... The lots were created it, it, before zoning. Yeah, everything, <laughs> everything before 1954 there's no, there's no is pre-existing nonconformity. Correct, but then the and is the killer, right? Because yeah. then it says and yeah. 5,000 square feet and 50 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so at, you're not grandfather in that sense because yeah. at that time, yeah. the town may have given permission for that lot, yeah. but then the and is going to Yeah, that, this, come, that. this comes up a lot. We have, we have mm -hmm. lots down at the lake that never had a structure on them that... Um, um, people, for people I want to put a house on them. And we're fair, okay, tell us who owned it when. Well, I owned it. And you look at the deed, and J.R. Ragman lives on lot A, got his house there, he owns lot B, J.R. Ragman. That's held in common ownership. The way zoning works is once it becomes common ownership, zoning tries to make stuff better. In other words, you don't meet the zoning anymore. It's called merger. And the frontage that came from that extra lot that you own in common makes yours better mm -hmm. from a zoning perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's why that language is in there. That language is not bad. That's, and it doesn't happen that often. Right. Uh, people over the years have become much smarter in terms of when they purchase property next door. But it, all it has to do is be in a different name or in a trust or in a, you know, it, it means it's not held in common ownership. The common ownership thing is, you know, a, a, a tough deal. And, uh, but. Uh, but that's different than what we're talking about here. But those are examples of other Board of Appeals cases. They, you know, they hear a lot of different stuff. And, and um, the, uh, you know, I know there's no simple answer here. And you guys don't do simple stuff anyway. You'd be <laughs> home no, I don't get anything done as a result. It seems like yeah. we just keep going around and around circles. But if you find Absolutely some language right. that you like in another town, yeah. you know, well, that would be a great suggestion. So in, instead yeah. of putting language in that you like, yeah. can we put in a process that the homeowner could go through I to like allow idea. the building inspector to have discretion? Because yes. the only the only times I've ever seen anything have an issue is like when the neighbors have neighbors. a problem because yeah. you're putting a wall on that porch and now I can't see the lake anymore or whatever you're doing. It could. So if, you, if we devise the list of you've got to do this, this, and this, and if you do these things, yeah. then the building inspector may or may not issue yeah. mm -hmm. and if you don't issue then they can then still they can go, go to the CBA. You always got the board of appeals. Yes. Right. Yes. But I would prefer to do it that way rather than just sure. give sure. you know if you want to enclose something that's already there because that may be an issue. But getting that cases. list is what I'm saying is like is that language any is there any other community that uses language like that to qualify the building inspector's position for the homeowner? Yes, we can look for that. That's that's what I'm, yes, we can what I'm asking for. for. That's not a question, but but y absolutely. S but let's let's talk a little bit about a process, the types of things that we would think are reasonable. Um, if somebody wants to, you know, build and wants to make an alteration to their house without going to the ZBA, and they're willing to go through a process instead. I always ask, have you got letters or spoken to your next door neighbors? Right. Right. So we would need to have um, yeah. that's, no, like, that's not unreasonable. a butters yeah. mm -hmm. official, you know, so they have to get an official list that's from the a, town, right? But that's an addition to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actual talking to the people who are adjacent to uh, this. Problem. I know, I know. Okay, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, <laughs> all right. No, Mary, there hang is on, the process on. of having but to contact they would have to get an official list from the town. Mm -hmm. That's part one. <laughs> I was just pausing <laughs> while before I went out. <laughs> and then, um, and then, would you say that they would have to go around and talk to them specifically? They would have to send letters. They would have to have the town send letters so that there's some record of that. What you know? I. Ultimately, if we can get like a signed letter from all the abutters that they have a, a document that they have all uh, signed on that says we are fine with whatever you're doing. So, so what if you did like a petition? Yeah, I've seen the attached plan. Yeah. I reside at whatever, right? And yeah. I take no, no, no exception to it. Yeah, and that then just sign your name and your address, and you you get all the people that are that whatever we think is essential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, currently the, the certified abutters list goes out to 300 feet, 300 a 300-foot radius around the mm -hmm. property, which in some cases 
is, is a lot of people. In other cases, <laughs> yeah. like out where I am, there's, there's not very many. Um, I don't think you'd need that many. Mm -hmm. um, the ones, the immediate abutters, and perhaps the abutters to abutters, mm -hmm. they, they'd be probably the only ones you know, that you, you'd need. Um, the immediate you know, abutters, however, in a situation, they they might they might also be farther than 300 foot radius yeah. <laughs> so yeah. from the structure, not from your. My, you know, my lot experience line, has but. been with a lot of the board of appeals stuff is most residents, when they think about it, say I'm going to be in that very same spot at some point, mm -hmm. and and so they, you know. They're okay with something. If one of the abutters signs a letter saying he has no objection, however, he sells off his property a year from then and the new owner comes in, does he have any rights no. about objecting nope. to? No more than if the Board of Appeals gave okay. him a special okay. permit. Okay. Um, yeah. but that, it's done. True. Uh, so his, his, his handwritten note, or what, his signed note, in a sense, his gets his consent. Special, okay. yeah. consent for perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, keep in mind, with, with Think of the dormer on the roof. Right, right, right. Yeah. Nickel dime yeah. stuff. Yeah. Agree, agree. Um, the, so, the, yeah. Go ahead. Know, not, not big additions. Not, you know. Anything that increases the size of the footprint right. of the house, without question, would go to the board of appeals. Okay. That's not what we're talking about. Um, but if you got the house and this is the footprint, and you're doing something to the house that exacerbates the knock footprint, you're make, making it taller, whatever. That's the kind of thing we're yeah. talking about again. But we're not talking a three-story addition. Sure. We've got to be careful to define how <coughs> minor the, right, the scope of the, the, the change is, or the okay. proposal is. It's got to be minor. And, uh, so, so signed letters. So, that yeah. Yeah. so signed letters from the abutters. If any abutter objects, that would kick Seven. it to the ZBA, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Does mm -hmm. everybody agree? Yeah. Um, I think one objecting is, is a little too stringent. What if you what if you just got a neighbor that just doesn't like you? Yeah. Everybody doesn't have neighbors to get along with? Oh. <laughs> oh man. That's in theory that's the way it works, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I so I don't I don't that. think you can ask them to get a hundred percent. I think that's maybe you can increase the the what you need to get. I don't I don't know. But I but I, I think don't it's think unrealistic. It's, I don't to think say it's three hundred feet a radius of the butters that it, that no. makes sense, especially down the lake. It's it's like I said, the abutters and the abutters to the abutters, and that's about it that you probably well, are working with. Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if to your point, if, if the one, say we got six neighbors, yeah. we're gonna get six letters, five of them come back and say, yeah, this is a great idea, I love my neighbor, let them do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. The fifth, uh, sixth guy says, no, nah, I don't think so. I'm not going to be able to see the lake anymore during certain phases of the moon and did I, whatever his reason is. That one alone, for me, would just send it to the Board of Appeals. Because then that that person does need to describe it to the Board of Appeals. They, it could, the yeah, Board of Appeals can still, can still say, um, yeah, we're going to grant the special permit because <clears throat> we think you're, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but um, but I, think, I think the one person is, is I, I see what you mean, but I still think the one person, one abutter, with an objection is not appropriate to kick it to ZBA. Yeah. See, even at the, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, uh, but to, to Ria's point, somebody 300 feet away, no. yeah. the, the, uh, you know, to kick it off, I, I think is, is, is a bit much. Well, th that we have to still decide whether oh, okay. it's immediate so abutters it, or 300 foot radius. To bring, in, to bring in a radius? Yeah. Or <coughs> May I? The, the, we we're trying to find a way to streamline the process for insignificant projects. Mm -hmm. Say, no, so no, you, no, got an, I, you got a non conforming stuff. structure, yeah. it doesn't meet any of the setbacks, and you want to put a dome around the roof. Mm -hmm. So the bylaw clearly says that if it doesn't, if it's, if it doesn't meet the setbacks, you've got to go to the Board of Appeals for a special permit. So, as you know, it happened to my mother. The, the cost, yeah. the cost incurred for the for the drawings, for the for the survey, for the damn ad in the newspaper, um, for the abundance list, all, you know, easily eclipsed a thousand dollars before you even get to the board. Correct. And you know, so that's why you know, as someone said, I responded that most of the cases that go before the board get approved because there's a lot of thought process up to that point. Um, 
neighbors still get to come. They all get invited. Everybody within 300 feet, they all get letters. And uh, the board, almost without exception, asks, have you talked to your neighbors? And they'll say yes. And they'll ask, is there anybody in the audience who want to speak to this particular case? And oftentimes, there's nobody in the audience. And, you know, John's case, just a just month or so ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He went through the 300-foot thing, and da da da, -da and, and, and the Board of Appeals gave it to him. But the, the, and, and that goes why special permits, particularly, most are approved, because there's a lot of work behind the scenes to get to that point. Right. And, and nobody would spend that money on a full highway project. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I was trying to say we can list down the requirements that we yeah. want that letter of intent, but I, I, it would always be, we should add language that says at the discretion of zoning and enforcement officer most of the requirements. We don't want to make it hard to rule, right? Because you don't know, like if it's such a tiny thing that. <clears throat> Yeah. How much of the neighbors have to say yes? That we don't have to decide. We don't have to put the number down because it's at the, at the manual intervention. So if it's so insignificant, the zoning enforcement yeah. officer can take a decision at that point. Otherwise, it goes to zoning board of appeal. Even so, with one objecting a butter, that could be uh, instead of bumping it to the ZBA, he it, could say the, the enforcement officer could actually have some leeway in say. talking to that person and understanding what their objection is. And then if it's still not satisfactory. We, yeah, we could put that in, but you know, all I'm thinking of is the zoning enforcement officer, whoever that yeah. person may be at any point in the future, is probably going to go by the letter of what we have written okay. for the sake of their own um, liability and right. you protection. Know, you know, for yeah, another, protection. For another case, this is that you're going to need a drawing. You're, not, you're going to need to look at yeah. it, some kind of a drawing. Are you going to look at a handwritten thing on the back of a napkin? Yeah. You, so it's almost like the you're going to need what the Zoning Board of Appeals would need anyway. Well, I wouldn't for this dormer, for example. They well, would you not. would have to know how big that dormer is. Well, of course I would. Sure. So that would be a drawing, right? Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't have to be done by an architect. But it, but it would have to be something that's got some dimensions on it. Oh, sure. And all that. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. so, so what I'm saying is like it's almost getting to the point where you have an actual you know, you have a drawing that is yeah. a, a, a verified drawing yeah. by somebody who's saying that this is what it is. Yes. But you need a drawing before you You would need to do drawing. that anyhow. Even if, yeah. well, if you're going to be high. making, yeah, a change that's like that. That's my point. That's right. he's, if we are already going to that point of doing that Are drawing. you saying, why, then why not go <clears throat> to ZBA at Basically, that point? Basically, you're, you're, you're almost going yeah. to the same, you're going through the same process. It's just you're going no. through. Yeah, but just, if you're. But it cuts one step out of the process if for not, them, you know. And if you're going to the ZBA, then, then you have to get the certified list. You have to send this, the certified letters. Mm -hmm. You have to get a stamp drawing. Yeah, survey. The you survey have to get the survey. Separate. Like 15 copies. Yeah, of everything. And the time, right? Um, how much of the time investment is to get to that process mm -hmm. to go to the ZBA? And it's four and to six it, weeks to get your appointment, the appointment, and then well, 20 uh, days afterwards. The process from the day you appear and say, I want to put an addition on my house to the day you can actually do it, it's generally four months. Nah. You know, because <laughs> the state mm -hmm. who, who oversees all of this stuff has timelines, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you know, the hearing has to be held by this time, the decision has to be written by this time. You know, before you do anything, you get a recorded at the registry, which just happens to be in Cambridge, and, and where we go every day. And, uh, you know, I was just, you know. Oh, the change that you mentioned. And most every, the other part of it is, is, I have a drawing is the, the, I actually like zoning, I enjoy zoning, I enjoy the interaction with the people, even though it's frustrating sometimes like that. But, you know, some of my colleagues in similar positions will just do that on their own. They say, "Ah, do the dormer; it's no big deal. Nobody knows." Nobody, you know, so I just do it the opposite way. I just say, if there's going to be an issue, you got to go to the board of appeals. You know, that's the only way you're protected. Because if I make a mistake and say, "You go ahead and do it," that doesn't cover them. <laughs> does yeah. They can be made to take it down. There's a ten-year statute of limitations. And and uh, for zoning building permits issued by mistake, you know, so it's a serious thing, it's, you know. And if there's an issue, uh, I always defer to just go to the board of appeals, and that's what it is. Is there other but, other examples that you know of besides the dormer example that you can kind of well, put in this had, category? We've had, for example, uh, I'll, I'll say decks. Everybody's got a deck. Mm -hmm. Some of them are pre-existing, non-conforming. I want to make a screen porch out of my deck. Well, the footprint hasn't changed at all. It's the same deck. It just happens to be 
a house on it. Or if you go a little bit further, and this is in the building trade, this is how it works. The screen porch says, ah, I'm going to... I'm Make gonna it, winterize it. Yeah. I'll put my I'll stove put my up. Kitchen there. in there. It becomes part yeah, of the okay. house. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the reality is that's how it works. Yeah. And you know, and we know it's that. The camel. You know, so the the um, um, I had a case in Brookline where where they they had a a porch on the front of the house. It was right on the street, and they wanted to enclose it. The porch was already there. They wanted to put windows and move the front door out to the street. Board of Appeals. They went. And they had to go to the Board of Appeals. Luckily for them, nobody. Everybody in Brookline objects to everything, you know, but the uh, <laughs> it's not it's not so much that way here. But you know, I always defer to the, the what's going to protect you and what's going to protect the town, because if I issue it by mistake, then the town is liable, and I won't do that. The uh, but if there was some way that, and again, I don't mean to minimize <laughs> that you know, some way we could draft some language to allow. The zoning enforcer would come to, come to a decision. You know, neighbors could still appeal the issuance of the building permit. How come you let, put this dormer on here? Well, if I'm going to appeal the issue, they go to the Board of Appeals and explain what the thing is. But that was, that was pretty much it. It wasn't. I didn't mean to make a big deal out of it. I know you guys <laughs> got big stuff. I, I, you remember the, with my mother's house, I brought this up a few times. I had put a, a uh, ramp in the back. Now the handicap ramp was allowed. But because I, I had to put a, a landing on the top, which was actually considered a deck, yeah. I had to go to the Board of Appeals. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was no big, no bigger footprint. The ramp would have been, yeah, I could have just kept it a, a slanted yeah. ramp, you know, but then her wheelchair would have rolled back down. dangerous to, yeah, not yeah. have them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But because of that little technicality that I wanted that four foot by four foot yeah. spot on the top, yeah. mm. I triggered it. Through the chair. Yes. Um, <laughs> Two questions, one of them for Mike. Um, is the zoning board able to waive certain application requirements, fees, plans? Can they waive that those are required? No. There, there's no process for that. So if, if somebody comes in and submits an application, but they don't submit a, a certified plan, or they ask yeah, for yeah. a waiver of the yeah. $300 fee? Nobody's ever done it. But, you know. okay. I don't know of any other way of getting before the board. It's a public hearing. It's um, um, well, it happens. It happens in front of the planning board. Somebody yeah. will submit an application. Yeah. They don't think a certain thing is yeah. required because yeah. their project is small enough. Yeah. So they ask for a waiver, and the planning board yeah. says, "Yeah, we don't yeah. think you need an environmental analysis for that. Yeah. That kind of a thing." Or we had shared parking special permit where they didn't pay the full fee, so the planning know, board waived the fee. Maybe that kind of mechanism would work. I, you know, possible. I, don't, I don't know because it would be far less onerous than. All the paperwork and the advertisements and all that. I'm just looking for something that's less. The, the other suggestion uh, I would, or question I would have is, if it's possible, put some language in that uh, requires them to submit a preliminary application to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. The Zoning Board of Appeals can say, yes, that is minor enough that they don't need a special permit, and then pass it back off to the building yeah. inspector, and that it can be. take three weeks rather than four months. Yeah. That, that, may, that may be a solution as well. You put in language saying the zoning board can determine if something is a minor enough project to not require a special permit under the bylaw. Because they could do that in the course of a regular meeting, right? And, and rather, rather than having a public. Wouldn't that require drawings? And wouldn't that require the same? So, on what basis is a ZBA going to say? So you would. So on this in this situation, you would be creating an almost a new type of application it's more of an interim application where mm -hmm. they generally describe the project they want to do they want to do a dormer this is a sketch of what i want to do i haven't noticed any abutters i haven't put a newspaper ad in or anything like that and the planning or the zoning board can say yeah we believe that's a minor enough change to not require a special permit under this section of our bylaw and we you know remand it back to the building inspector to review and approve something like that so, like, providing me all the requirements of the building code. Mm -hmm. Now, in that particular case, for instance, if 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 it were to be put in in that way, then the abutters would never be notified. So that's you know that's something that we would want to think about whether or not that was uh, an important part of the process. Well, so. the ZBA would still have the ability to say this is not minor. You have to inform your abutters. So, in yes. a sense, you have a failsafe built into that. I that assume. is true. But, mm -hmm. but for instance, if we think that even a minor change, sh you should notify the abutters. So we should 
that, you know, if if we feel that that is the language appropriate. So through the chair, that could be just a, a policy of the building inspectors yeah. that mm -hmm. if it gets remanded back to them, right. these are the things you That's need what to, I was to, to, to point meet out earlier. to. Yeah. And it might not be, you know, as onerous as an application, but you need to get sign off from your direct abutters. You would need some kind of plan that would be enough for them to I make mean, a decision mm -hmm. and do that rather than go through the newspaper advertisement and, and everything. And then like you that. can reduce the fees because you don't have all those other things involved. Right. Through the chair? Yes. I have one more question for Mike. A person in your position, are you, when a plan comes before you or somebody yep. comes to you to get a building permit, yep. are you 100% comfortable with what you say is minor and what you'd say is not minor? You know, I guess my question is, are, are you in a better position to say it's, it's a minor thing or is the ZBA in a better position to say it's a minor thing? Hmm. I, he gets to say it, it before it the depends. ZBA. I'm perfectly comfortable with me. I'm not perfectly comfortable with the guy that takes my place five years from now or two years or two weeks whenever they decide to fire me. Okay. The, the, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm really careful. Not all the guys in my same position are the same way. You know, I, I don't know. Okay. There. Okay. Other than footprint and height restrictions, can you think of any other criteria that, um, that might be important casting um, a shadow huh? casting a shadow yeah. but that's usually associated yeah. with height yeah the if, if it was a case like we had this case that you were talking about years ago about a person who built on a pre-existing non-conforming lot on the lake built a gorgeous house the guy across the street um he didn't have to go to the board of appeals he met all the setbacks the guy across the street had a, you know there were signs all over the lake I can't see the sunrise anymore. I can't see. It went crazy, and and to the point where he said, "I'm going to build a tower behind my house so I, my wife and I can go up and see the lake." And the house sits there now. I says, "I'll permit the tower. If you want to build a stupid thing?" He never goes up there. I ask him all the time, <laughs> but but it's that kind of thing. Right. Um, you know, even though they didn't have to go to the board of appeals, he wanted to be. You know, right. they didn't have to get his two cents and, and under the law, and he just wanted that. I'm, I'm still comfortable with the process we went through. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it is what it is, you know. It, okay. it, uh, but well, as a result of that, you gave me the guidance to go to my neighbors yeah. with my plans, my architectural yeah. drawings, my well, that's the thing, everything, and I, and I did, and I got letters from every one of my abutters yeah. who said, Yes, we are in support of this yeah. project, yeah. including the lady across the street who was going to have her her sight line was going to be affected, yeah. but she was fine. Yeah. The, uh, so that was the important part. That's why I always ask at ZBA, yeah. have you gotten the approval yep. from the people next door? Yeah. Because it's the most, or what does the neighborhood Absolutely. look like? I, I wasn't familiar with, with which building he he was doing and now I know it because I do know Irene Timlich I didn't realize she had left um, but you know the there you know if it's the one building that looks awkward compared to everything else on the street that's another that's right. another story yeah. too yeah. it's got to look right no, exactly. yeah no I think that's the most important part of this process is that people have a voice yeah. and if if we are if we propose anything where people lose their voice about what their neighbor does, <laughs> then that's that can be an issue. And I think that as as long as we find a way to give them a voice, then um, then then we can you know structure it in a, a number of different ways. But so. if I make to the chair, but how much of a voice? Yeah, that's exactly. <clears throat> because okay. again, you 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 buy your own property, and exactly. if it's not affecting people. Um, and just because we may have changed the size of a conforming lot after the person bought it, you know, stuff like that happens. Yeah. Like, we, like we talked about downtown on a, a, B, and C Street. I remember a few years ago, and we, we tried to reduce the size of those lots. 
uh, the, the, the conforming size of the lot so that instead of 70 or 80 percent non conforming, 70 80 percent would be conforming. And it didn't get through town meeting because we yeah. did a very bad job yeah. describing what we were trying the to do. Public relations, which is, right? Which is yeah. what basically what we're trying to do here is the yeah. same thing. Um, but you know, it, but you know, it, uh, to, to Mike's point, you know, somebody might just not like you. Yeah, or, or may have a problem with you, and they just then they'll try and stop you from doing something that's really nice to your house. Yeah. And well, it's your house. but then you still have the process. You can still right. yeah. So yeah. That case, still the ZBA. Mike could just send them to the board of appeals. I yeah, mean, exactly. Look at you got a well, you, got, you got a neighbor you don't get along with. I, I, you know. I'm sorry. I, yeah. There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. We'll fight your case at the board of appeals. Yeah, and if, yeah, if somebody okay were to know that too. that process, it's like, yeah. well, I'd have to get all my abutters to sign a letter. Yeah, I'm never going to get it from him. So. And then, okay, or I can just go to the ZBA. I'm like, yeah, yeah okay, let's yeah. do that instead. You know, that's, yeah. that they can make that decision. The ZBA light process definitely seems at least a, a positive start. Yeah. Instead of the heavy lifting, the 40, like six months or whatever it is, something condensed for half the cost and half the paperwork requirements, yeah. definitely that seems uh, at least an initial yeah. a good, good piece to start. I agree. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, I think we have enough information at this point to, you know, go do a little bit more research. I'll talk to Mark Hyman um, and, you know, probably, Rhea, could you do so as well just to get uh, some more feedback from him on some of these ideas, mm -hmm. but uh, I can give him a call too. Yeah, I'm not um, going to be at the next meeting. I oh, that's okay. Out of, out okay. Of town, but so. I, can, I can do it. Yeah, okay. that's fine. I, I know Mark. So, um, and then... Yeah, and then we'll we'll have it on the agenda again either next time or the, or the time after that. Um, and I think we can, if we decide to um, make this change and propose it um, for town meeting, um, we can certainly get it done by by the deadline. So, yeah, good. Thank you so much. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate Marcia. the information. Take care. You're doing good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next is accessory family dwelling. Um, and really, um, really wanted to address like whether or not. I like this one too. The what? accessory family dwelling. You like that one also. I like that one. I, was, I don't know why it failed, other than one member of the Board of Appeals got up and said the world was going to change if you approve this. <laughs> you know, I, I like the idea. <laughs> yep. Again, that simplified the. So, so really, you know, Mr. Terry came before us a few weeks ago and was suggesting not necessarily a specific change that he would want, but he just said, look for ways to make the town more affordable for, you know, in, you know obviously not every house is going to be more affordable, um, but, but so that people can, you know, live their entire life cycle here, essentially, if they want to. Um, and um, rather than leave, leave it all for after the deadline for town meeting, so in February or beyond, um, we wanted to discuss whether any small changes were something appropriate to propose for this town meeting. Um, so <coughs> accessory family dwelling unit. Now, Rhea, I know you have opinion on this because we talked about this last time, so if you wanted to... Yeah, you know, I have a proposal. Based on what we've seen at town meeting before, <laughs> if there's one word change or it's got a much better shot at you know chipping away at this thing, and I was th I was thinking that it, you know maybe getting rid of the no owner occupied requirement um, in the adjacent in the uh, accessory uh, as the a possible way to chip away at this. But I don't know. John, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, again, and if, what if we can do to open it up? Yeah. And so, start, the, start the process. But when looking at, at like, the options, I mean, that seemed to me to be, like, the, the, the simplest change, like, with one word. Which bylaw would get changed as a result? So, yeah, which, which number is it? Do you know? Um, it's oh, accessories. It's, do they have the numbers on that work plan? <laughs> Um, 210 
So is there any way to make this um, a oh, searchable? Oh, I'm sorry. No, it goes no? further back. So, okay. Sorry. Hmm? A searchable um, It is page PDF 85. Like a, Should be. I mean, by like, you know, with links, hyperlinks and within, oh, so from yeah, the table of contents, I would love that, yeah. but <laughs> I don't know. I probably won't do it to this one because yeah. it's going to get no, updated soon. to the next one. Um, but to the 2019 one. Oh, gosh, that I would be so wonderful. talk to Connor. And <laughs> maybe it's going to be a public, public one, but I can make one for Zach. Okay, and one. okay so duplex, um, is it after duplex or before duplex? Uh, before. Before, thank you. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. And, and the section in that would have the amendment done? Um, okay. Parking. I'm looking for it. Yeah, I didn't bring Ingress, my egress, space. use limitations. I think it's C, use limitations. Because okay. it does say family living unit. So it says that in C. Okay. Yeah. Um, it also says family living unit in B. Okay. And A talks about is the intent to assure that the single family character of the neighborhood will be maintained. So, so this is, you know, just, just talking about when it was first put together and or amended. So first put in here in 1993 and amended in 2009. Um, but um, when we discussed it two years ago on the ZAC, um, there was a lot of discussion about actually limiting it more, um, not making it more accessible. <laughs> so we're having the opposite discussion now. Um, and, and a lot of the, the um, concept was, we just don't want, you know, like multiple family dwellings all over every neighborhood, you know? That 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 uh, it was the whole idea is that that the character of the neighborhood has to stay single family, and so if they want a little more room, a little bit more autonomous space for another family member, either a senior or you know, God forbid, teenagers stay stay there forever, uh, <laughs> twenty somethings. Um, <laughs> um, but that that was the gist of most, you know, John, right? You were there too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was so that the, well, was I think the there general were feeling. Couple of people. That was that was because we had like thirty people. I think. I, yeah, yeah, but I don't know that it was just because of that. It just seemed like uh, we had a lot of yeah. a lot of people were talking I about can, this. I can I can think of an instance that you know it would not be someone who was related to be in the successor unit. That'd be a caretaker. You know, somebody who is helping the primary people in the home. So the primary people don't have to move someplace. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a thing again, that comes up to me. again, that's still accessory, right? And, and that's the and name that's, of the that's the, exactly the, what this is. Yeah. yeah, it's accessory to the main structure. It's accessory to the main use, which is a single family home. So it's just oh, just an apartment for you know grandma, an apartment mm -hmm. for the college kid who will never leave, uh, <laughs> you know, or an apartment for a caregiver. Does this expressly prevent this becoming a rental property? Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and that is, that essentially is what we're talking about changing. And unfortunately, it looks like it would be changing more than one word here. Right. But, but that's the mm -hmm. concept is that we would change the, the original purpose of this to make it potential for it almost seems like properties. entire A has to go in that case because yeah. the A talks about the single family the intent and purpose. character yeah. and which we are trying to challenge in this mm -hmm. forum uh, too. If, if you drive around town though, and I've been noticing lately, there's a lot of places that I always thought were single family homes, which are not in fact single family homes. Yeah. They've got four electric meters on the outside of the house, so I'm pretty sure there's more than one family living in there. And honestly, I don't have a problem with it becoming a rental property what well I think that the, the you, then you're opening it up to this Airbnb issue which is now you're having transient rentals and that's yeah. a different animal altogether. I think it's a different animal but um, and and I we definitely are going to be talking about that yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even with long-term renters um, the things I was hearing were um, well if it's not owner occupied first of all if it's not owner occupied um, and that applies to duplexes too, which is you know uh, related. Um, it 
it will not be taken care of as well. Um, there'll be too much parking. Lawn will be taken away, so there'll be lots of cars there. You know, there'll be lots of you know Can't driveway. Can't do that without site plan review, though, so. right, Mary? Can you can for you a, change for parking? A single part family home. Sure, it, I could take out my lawn. Yeah. And put oh more yeah. Park. yeah. No problem it, at all. I just I just oh, put in a circular God. driveway. Yeah. Get the zoning enforcement officer yeah. down at you. you know, just <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, mm. that, those types of things can be changed for a single family home that without any planning board put, involvement. Put in a circular driveway. You can do a driveway. Yeah. Yeah. Without permits? Yeah, you can do a driveway without, but you have to do a, you have to do a, a, a cut, curb, a cut? curb cut permit. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So mm. the other thing is that even though this talks about this can't be converted to a rental property, I don't think that can be enforced. I don't. I don't think it's rental? realistically it can be enforced that it's not being used as a rental property. I mean, yeah, I don't no, know no, that no, we have know, a lot of people no, going to go to, around yeah, looking into windows and finding for. out. Um, so yeah, in, that's in, in my single family home. If I decide that I want to leave that house and, and but still own it and rent it out, can I do that now? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, yeah, I don't so know what the difference accessory is. Accessory yeah. is that you have no, some I, part of no, the no. house that but, is but it, subordinate I, it, to the main Just in terms of maintaining the, the, the single the property, single family yeah, neighborhood thing. I mean, I could choose to, to start renting out my home. No. I'm sorry. I couldn't. I don't think. Because it says. Uh, provided the owner of record of the structure is a resident of the structure, well, which I, includes I, 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 in a different only area, only an accessory, but but, so but just a single family house. home. No, but oh, just right. just yeah. any residence. So, yeah. so yeah. the fact that that this accessory dwelling unit at some point becomes a rental, that doesn't necessarily mean the neighborhood is going, going down going the to toilet. Pot, right. Well, it's still your investment. It's still your investment that you're going to want to protect. Right. You're still going to maintain it, or it becomes a. Couldn't I already have a renter in my home, giving them one bedroom and one bathroom, and common access to, uh, access to the common door, to a uh, space to park in the mm -hmm. driveway? Oh, Couldn't sure. I already do that? Sure. So that's already a non-family member who I am letting into my home. This is technically yeah. no different than that, right? Yeah, but right? I think the, the argument, the other side of the argument is you're creating a situation that allows you to do something that's not allowed. Like I, I have a son living at home. I can charge him rent. Therefore, my house becomes, you know, <coughs> rental property, right? But he's a family member. He's yeah, a, he's but a, still. he is a family member. Right. But, but regardless it, no, of whether or not he's yeah. a family member, I I could do that. Mm -hmm. If you allow me to build an accessory unit, then you're creating like a separate apartment, and you're making it okay to do what's not necessarily okay to do. And I'm not saying that that I agree with that. I'm just saying that I think that's the rationale. Yeah. Because there's always going to be people that are renting rooms. Yeah, my recollection at the town meeting was that the, the discussion, we spent a lot of time on town meeting talking about, well, what happens when that that family member is no longer living there? Right. Then, then now what happens? Right. So yeah. what does happen? Yeah. It's empty space. Mm -hmm. I well, think by the bylaw, it's empty space. Unless by you're the bylaw. Something. But what, does, what really happens? I, I rent it out to my, yeah. you know, my son's friend who's looking for somewhere to rent a Jeep. So we might as well make it legal so at least we know what's going on. Right. That's the, that's the other part of it. If you bring, it, if you bring the stuff up, you know, uh, uh, above board, then, then at least we know what's, what's going on in the town. <laughs> the town might be able to tax appropriately. <laughs> and I, I think <laughs> Carol's point about saying, you know, assure that the single family character of the neighborhood will be maintained. I think we can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think with, we're doing that now. With, without saying you can't do this. Right. In, in section C, um, it says the existing unit shall accommodate an additional family unit only if A, a member of the additional family is related by blood, marriage or adoption. <laughs> could we, could we propose, I mean, could that be stricken down? That's that the part that I've been talking that's about. about. <laughs> oh, that's what he's talking about. I, I caught a family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, because that seems to me to be the simplest way yeah. to open this up a little bit and just allow, you know, I have, I, I live on the lake. Um, my neighbor to my right, um, they sold their property to someone who came in overpaid and paid cash and closed in seven days. And they turned around and rented it to people who lived someplace else in Hopkinton and moved there. And I was in shock because here I've been waiting for this cottage to get renovated and upgraded, like I've upgraded. <laughs> you, 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 you tell me about that. And, you know, I, but I will tell you, this renter, he goes out and he gets rid of the leaves on the, the yard. He goes out and he cuts the lawn. He goes out, he was shoveling when I was coming here. I mean, he's, he's a different kind of a renter than I think the bad renters are out there. Um, even though he has the pit bull that drives me crazy. Um, that's not socialized. That's like, that's a problem for me. But, but I, you know, I, I can't tell that he's different than the folks who owned it before from, right. from, the, out, from the look right. of the building. I just know that the building's not going to get, you know, improved and added on, you know, anytime soon. Which could be good. Which, well, <laughs> could be good. It, I mean, the, the point oh, is, is that the, 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 the building is from, you know, circa 70. Mm -hmm. You know, it was built in the 30s. It's now circa 70. It's like it's not going anywhere. And, and so, unfortunately, that holds back the investment on the lake. We see too many of those lined up one another. But, you know, that's... Pre-existing non-conforming structure. Their property. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's their it's property. Their property. <laughs> Maybe the original owner had frustrations with the EPA. That <laughs> could be. <laughs> Pre-existing no, non-conforming. No, he didn't. Yeah. So, but. so it, if if we rest or delete some of the language in uh, C. Part C, mm -hmm. that would free this thing up so that so it frees up a little, frees it up a, a, enough that enough. right. That that you know Carol's son could be living with his girlfriend, who's not blood, re, uh, you know, right. adopted. What? Or a caretaker, <laughs> a caregiver, a caregiver <laughs> in in right. a He's house where there's multiple generations, and sure. there's someone that's right. unrelated, and right. that's that was the. Right. I have friends now who they're looking to add on to their houses now in other communities because they need that caregiver. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so, uh, uh, in E, the third third sentence, I think, anyhow, it's in the fourth line, an interior doorway shall be provided between each dwelling unit as a means of access for supervision and emergency response. I think that needs to be stricken as well, but again, you know, I'm, that's my opinion. Are you with me if you wish? Well, the, Why, the, the, the wait has a minute, can you read regress. it again? An interior doorway shall be provided between each dwelling unit okay. as a means of access, obviously, for purposes of supervision and emergency response. So the idea being that if you have an elderly relative living there, you want to be able to get to them without being able to, having to go outside your house and then inside theirs. Um, but I, well, I actually, you know, if if we're making this a potentially, it, it shouldn't. It just shouldn't be in there. It should be. Right. Yeah, you put in a door if you want it. You don't put a door if you don't want it. Yeah. You know. I don't know where that came from. Actually, it sounds it's absurd. Been, I know, but it's <laughs> but it's in there. No, but I I I, I want to supervise my son and his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. No, where that comes where that comes it comes about and and, and John might might uh, know some more about this, is if it's a if it's a separate. Um, apartment, then there's no door there, and right. the door has to come from the other side. So this is, I believe, one An of the ways that, that that keeps it that accessory. keeps it an, a, a non-rentable unit by having that door on the inside as opposed to the outside. Yeah, but it doesn't keep it. Yeah, it doesn't. All you do is no, 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 lock yeah. the door, no, <laughs> and I, then I, it. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> but you still just need to have two means of yeah, I mean, two means of egress. That's yeah, but all. So, somebody was thinking of this and 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 wrote it when they wrote it, um, as as very very specific to an elderly relative. So that's you know that's and where right. the wording came from. That you know and that's that's well, why that's it's why that's why B exists within that 
uh, within C, <laughs> sorry, B. A member of the original family is 60 years of age or older. Yeah. Even that needs to come out. That, absolutely, it come out. <laughs> that whole sentence, it needs to come out. We can't say age anymore. Yeah, we can't anyhow. So. Oh, this is already in violation of... Yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, what we, that, that's one of the... We town, tried town to change it. It got voted before. down because, you yeah. know, we tried to change you too can't much. can't do that real estate. It made people uncomfortable changing too right. much. Because this does not even allow for a nanny or an au pair to have their own space. That is correct. In, uh, and mm -hmm. which in today's day and age when everybody's working, mm -hmm. we need to be able right. to provide that. And, and caregiver, and at, once again, at the, at the, it's the, the, the younger man side. or the older man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If I, if I want to age in place in my house, but I need 24-7 I need right. care, I want, I want a place for, for somebody to live there. Yes. Right. So that's, I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's very different than an au pair. But so, it's still a, yeah. a necessary thing. I would suggest people look at K because that talks about the occupancy permit and the transferability and stuff like that. So, C and K, and there was one more initial letter, was there not? <coughs> You're talking about language in C. Yeah, in K. I would like you to see K. That's no, what they said. no. Yeah. We originally started with C. Oh, we did. We did. That was C where we were striking, yes. potentially striking the um, member of the family. E. You know. E and is it, the other one? Okay. And E doorway. has the interior doorway. Thank you. And K has uh, the occupancy this permit information. That's exactly what that's for. I also repeats the whole <laughs> thing about to accommodate an additional family member only if by blood or blah 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 so um and right you mean kl you're right yeah. it just looked like an i i don't know my alphabet evidently <laughs> no a and l seem to be the same thing it's just the more and more we remove this language the more and more it becomes similar to the duplex language right so which is why i've always wanted to look at these as as a group but yeah. no you but, can't because people they're, they're, but they're at the same i know but yeah. i know it's like uh, oh, from an efficiency what, standpoint what i'd like to just get it all done at once but i know that you know that's not yeah. possible in government um <laughs> well, no because some, some people might have have a uh, a problem with condos yes. or something like that. We don't want this to be washed down or, or conflated. Right. Well, that's 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 exactly. It does not look like a single family home. That's correct. Which and this is, is this is trying to maintain the look of a single family mm. home. And and there's a lot of wording in here that, that describes that what that describes is. that. Yeah. yeah. From the outside it should look like a single family home. There was, so that right. means would there never be a second main entrance? There, there cannot no, be a side entrance. Oh, um, there is a side entrance. Oh, there is. Okay. Yeah, because they, they have to for fire code. They have okay. to be able to okay. enter from the outside oh, two ways and of exit. Ingress, ingress, yeah, okay. um, but but so yeah, it could easily. I mean, there's there's almost every house has the potential to cordon off part of the house and make that a separate little yes. you know, apartment. Right, so. but accessory use you don't need to have a separate door. You don't have to. No. Okay. No. I oh. still think the fire fire code would have that. You need so. two ways. Two ways. Two ways yeah. in and out. Doesn't mean they can't be the same ways in and out. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ingr mm -hmm. adequate provision mm -hmm. as determined by director need, of Muni municipal ways. inspections shall be provided for separate ingress and egress to the outside of each unit. That's what it says. Is that for duplex or accessory? No, this That's is this accessory. Is an yeah, e. Yeah. It's right at the top of E. I'm sorry. <laughs> can you read it again? Um, adequate provision shall be provided for separate ingress and egress to the outside of each unit to that that to me means a door maybe they mean a window but that to me means a door hmm. so yeah so the only no, you need doors. Yeah. 32 inch yeah so so the difference in the definition that i see is that uh, it needs to it needs to remain subordinate to the principal living quarters for yep. accessory dwelling and duplex mm -hmm. doesn't have to do that so right that's so that's the, essentially the big difference yeah. right okay so what we need to do, you know, I, I suggest we all go read this some more, look at the language of it. Yep. We need to make any changes we make, we need to make it consistent within the whole thing. But if we make a lot of changes or it seems like a lot of changes, that could scare people. So that's just something to keep in mind is that, you know, if we it, want to make this change and we make the reasoning for it about, you know, the, we can talk about the reasoning for it. Caregivers. 
caregivers for older right. young caregivers um, make it you know it, let's let's face it it is going to be potential rental property um, so but it, is this accessory family dwelling unit talking about <coughs> building an additional unit onto the house it can be done in a number of different ways okay it can be built within the existing footprint so at a basement apartment mm -hmm. right right it can be an addition to the building okay. um, that is attached to Which the building. Which is what I did. And it can be a separate feet. building on your lot, so which has some restrictions. But say you have a pool be. house already and you want to convert it into an, a fully functional apartment. So, hmm. yeah, all of those. A basement unit, yeah. by definition, unless it has a walkout basement entrance, only has a bulkhead. So where is the second? Uh, oh yeah, my my, base, right. my basement has a full walkout. Well, that's a walkout. Yeah, so. But if you don't have, if, if you don't, then you wouldn't. Sloping. You need two you methods be able to, to right. get in and out. And is the yeah. bulkhead so, qualify as that? A bulkhead would qualify. Okay. Okay. A, okay. Okay. These windows? Uh, yeah. No. I don't. I don't, well, think I don't know. They qualify. go up, so maybe they do. But it has to be. Okay, bulkhead qualifies. That's good. Okay. okay. An opening of such a size that a person could get through it if there was sure, a fire. Sure, sure. Okay. That's okay. so a window is a method. Right. Mm -hmm. But even so, within the existing footprint, there might be um, there might be a bedroom and a bathroom off to the side, like on top of a garage or something like that. And you right. could convert that into an apartment by adding a little kitchen or something like that. And that would be within the existing footprint. So that it would be so separate, separate, separate qualifications it could be for it. Within the footprint or in addition, addition to, to or in addition on the unit. same lot. Yep. Yep. Okay. But I do think that maintaining the single family character, I think, is critical to all of these things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if but it, maintaining but, but what does that mean to you? Does it mean the look or does it mean, you know, does it mean the number of people go to and fro you know <laughs> that's hard to that's hard to like really um yeah make a determination <laughs> because if you looked at my house at any given time over the last few years I and mean, we had five cars coming and going all yeah. the time yeah so who, yeah. i mean well i mean and I, you know I'll, I'll throw scott richardson under the bus yes right I mean, you know i mean he had 13 kids Whoa. So that's a single family home, and there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of activity in the yeah. house. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I already have four cars in my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've got six now. No, six? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, I, I mean, essentially, I think that's what we need to think about, too, is how we present this. If, if it goes forward, how do we present it at town meeting? I gotta get another house. <laughs> <laughs> And, okay, and you know, does that mean, first of all, we say the important thing is that, you know, these accessory family dwelling units are important for these reasons, you know, um, and, but they're also important um, to be able to be usable after a family member who was there, it passes. And um, so we're allowing for rental. But we want to, you know, leave in the language that maintains the single family character in terms of the look and so on, and um, and that it's subordinate to the main house structure. So it's not a duplex. It is not an apartment complex, you know, or a multi right. multi multi unit. Um, um, so so something like that. So um, so yeah, that's what I would charge you guys with, you know, thinking about okay. how to sell it. <laughs> how to change it, how to change it that will be acceptable to people and that, you know, would make an impact in terms of Thank you, Mary. affordability. Right? Thank you. Because that, that, I really do think that it really does matter in terms of how people live in this town long term. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I had, op I had nine au pairs, and, I mean, I was shoving them in different places. At one point, I had two au pairs. So it was like... You know, trying to put them in places, and then if I wanted to stay in a place, if I need to have someone who takes care of me when I'm older, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could exchange part of the cost of having them by the space in my house? Right. I mean, that would be fabulous. And and the growth committee, the growth advisory committee, we which mm. we went to a couple, yeah. couple of weeks ago, one of their guiding principles is to build more affordable housing in this town. Right. So moves like this actually go further in, in, in reaching that goal. Right. 
Yeah, and I think, Mary, we're also going to need to tie the Airbnb discussion along with this because mm -hmm. I think there's there's a, just there many. will be a fear yeah. Yeah. that if we if we add all of these accessory units that they're going to turn into Airbnb. Maybe that's just an M. Huh? Maybe that's just an M <laughs> that these units cannot be used for this purpose. Oh, oh, good. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Cannot yep. be used. And then it's it's yeah. out there and off the table for. Sure. Short-term mm -hmm. rentals. We'll have to define short-term rentals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think Defining. I think that would uh, that would make me feel a lot better mm -hmm. about. Yeah, and then we can still we can still character. you know deal with the Airbnb as a separate, <laughs> separate article <laughs> at some point in the future because it, d it definitely requires discussion. You know, it's like you know. Well, because it ban them back two years ago. <laughs> I said the the by the laws for around Airbnb were evolving, and we have seen that we've seen these big cities all of a sudden cracking down. So now we'll see this year how that works in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah. Just and we'll be in, our, uh, in New York, yeah. and we'll, we'll be able to see how this is evolving and be in a better place to write True. the right right exactly. Right. So Boston just just yeah, you know, something instituted last week. something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So. But was Boston's move not more because it was taking real rentals out of the marketplace? Ah. I, I'm not so sure it was because but, it's Airbnb, but just yeah. because. Well, yes, it, it, it was just taking rentals real out. rentals that were um, low income potential Correct. Um, Correct. out of the marketplace and making them short term, high, expensive rentals. Yeah, it was, in, it was in the paper this weekend. Right. Right. This weekend. <clears throat> so, in the case of. The um, Airbnb fear wouldn't the occupancy permit language try to control that because you can, an accessory dwelling unit has an you can nobody can take occupancy without getting permit from the director of municipal inspection. So would that, that, that help control the occupancy permit? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that just makes the space livable. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't Does define it not, how doesn't define who comes and goes and lives there. Yeah, and it would be very hard to enforce that. I think. Very hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we should we yeah, should look at that. Because this girlfriend might just not be home. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is right. That's <laughs> right. It's true. <laughs> but I think if we just put it in a straight, yeah. mm -hmm. it should not be used as an Airbnb. Yeah. So can, can we recap? Type. So we do, so we basically gonna pull out C. Mm -hmm. We're all gonna look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Make whatever changes. Yeah, yeah we're all gonna look at it. Make, make like the changes yeah, on your copy. Uh, we'll right. talk about it at an upcoming meeting and refine it more fully, okay? So I only one concern I had was in previous meetings, this forum has said that anything which has too many red lines is somehow automatically rejected by the town meeting. And this is a fair amount of redlining. It would we be. We already discussed. It would be. Right. And that's something that we need to, to so think we'll about. figure out that's how to sell it. I think if you right. can present it okay. as, as one cohesive reason why you're making yeah. these Correct. changes Correct. to that, yep. Yep. whether that's so you can provide a caregiver for an elderly person or live in help for your young children, these are the changes that sure. need to be made to make that happen. Perfect. Exactly, because that's going to speak volumes to the people who live here. Right. Yes. <laughs> wow, I yep. we found our school. I know. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> affordability and that and the affordability is the is <clears throat> also the rationale for saying it can't be used as Airbnb. Airbnb mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. because we're trying to create this for affordability and for convenience of, of current owners. So mm -hmm. and to allow people to live in town. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, the, the, I, the caretaker part, I remember even for the last time there was a town meeting discussion, somebody, a lot of people brought up the caretaker question and th there was no yes. language to cover that. So yeah. I'm sure that will be a big seller. So. Because again, probably people are doing it now. <laughs> John, big seller. We just haven't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So we'll, we will re consider this at the at the next meeting or the following meeting, depending on you know, depending on various agenda items, um, and um, please take a look. Sure. Please you know make wording changes, <coughs> suggestions, ideas. Okay. Our next topic for tonight is the business survival plan for the downtown corridor project. Um, I am I am suggesting that we can do a little brainstorming here tonight. And then I'd like one or two people to volunteer to 
reach out and get other ideas. Reach out either to, you know, and the a chamber? to the yeah, chamber, to, to the chamber, to local business, the downtown business owners, to um, the town manager, who is, I believe, already working on some aspects of, you know, what to do for the businesses during the downtown corridor project. Um, so, and because we don't want to duplicate efforts that's already going on, <laughs> but I think we can supplement those efforts. And I think there are some changes potentially in the zoning um, bylaws that make sense to, um, to go along with changes in other departments or, or short term things in other departments. Okay. So, brainstorming. Go. Anybody? Ideas? Well, Parking is number one. Yes, parking. <laughs> okay. <coughs> yep. And it, no parking tickets. <laughs> okay. Everything goes down in brainstorming. <laughs> oh. Writing everything. Um, the, the, there were a couple of places that the businesses were losing parking spots. The um, Muffin Cafe was probably the worst case because of it not having any on-site parking. Yeah. Um, it's going to be across the street. Right. It'll be and across the, the street. And next door, the, the lot that's going to be in the building. Right, but that's not going to be built by right. the time yeah, this that thing starts, built. right? Yeah. So, yeah. We, we, I mean, that would be the only, you know, if, if we could get that parking lot to actually be built prior to anything else, maybe? I don't that's know. A, oh, Is a, that the... That what is that called? Board. The main, uh, what main street? <coughs> Something main street? Parking? 20, 20, 23, 25. 23, 25 main? I, I mean, it, it, they could use 35. it temporarily, but it could also be the staging for the project in the future, but to allow that to get done first, maybe? I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be here for town meeting, and I'm not here for the next ZBA meeting. I'm out of town. This is my time of year. I'm always in New York. But I, you know, this is what I do. I try to handhold these people's hands and try and figure out what will work. The thing about Muffin Cafe is that the two spots in front of their, their store are the most convenient if you're just running in to get a cup of coffee, and right. that's what they sell. Right. If you've got to go around the block or if you even go to the other side of the street, it becomes that less... Yeah, less. And so if there is some kind of way to alleviate that, that is, the, that's the only, I looked at it, that's the only thing I could possibly see because you could go in around the building, park, come back out and go back onto the road and go back where you're going. It's the only, it's the only thing you can do. Okay. Well, there's, now, there's a parking lot. There's, are you talking about the side street right next to the Muffin Cafe? There's a parking yes. lot behind right. the, the Muffin House. Right. Whose parking lot is that? I thought that that was part of the, 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 the new project that's going to Chuck Joseph's project. No? Am I incorrect? No. I don't think so. Am I it's incorrect? Not, it's I not, think it's, it's, it's so is that the parking, parking lot, lot for the, for the four? Row. Yeah. Um, is, is that the parking lot for the um, apartment building that's like behind the gas station? Is that, would that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, I, one of those, one of those properties right there. on Hayden Row. Do you know what business I'm talking about? Like right across from mm -hmm. the, the entrance or the exit out of CVS. I think it's their parking lot, although I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, let's Grove clarify. Street. I want to clarify here. We're talking oh, sorry, about brainstorming about changes for the downtown quarter during construction. Yeah, well, yeah. Not necessarily after construction is complete, okay? Right. So during right. construction, yeah. So like yeah. Could be allow more signage for the businesses yeah. to... Yeah, change that by a lot to, to yep. from the 30-day from the minimum or maximum to, you know... Um, the, yep, 12 months. Yeah. Time limit. <laughs> duration. For the duration <laughs> of the... Uh, Allowing those sandwich boards and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, good. Next. It's, well. not, it's not a zoning issue, but I think somebody should... Uh, approach Dennis Katz and see if they can encourage him to have a parking lot in his parking lot. You can do that. Is that the Bills or is that no, CVS? Yeah, no, no, that's, that's Hop Hopkinson Drug. Hopkinson Drug, Hopkinson Dennis, drug. okay. Dennis, Dennis Hop Drug. Why don't we just allow him to have a, a little booth there and collect three bucks from anybody that wants to park? No, but he can do that anyway. Hmm? He, he can? can? He can do that. Anybody can do that anyway. Mm -hmm. You don't have to ask. Yeah, you can. 
That's how that you know when you when you go to Patriots games. I'm sure many of those people don't have permits. Would that be a commercial parking lot? Mm -hmm. I think it would be. Which might not. Which is a separate use. Uh, I just think it could be a revenue stream for him and a help for the town, if there was a way to to make it work for. How him. would it differentiate between his own customers and people coming? He's. he's I mean. He's he got two lots. He could so validate he's got, parking. Yeah, he yeah. have two lots. Yeah. So. They're never full. Mm -hmm. um, but when was the last time? I mean, I've brought this up I don't know how many times because this is what, you know, if you're trying to change this stuff, you have to go to the property owner. And I don't know who the last time someone approached him, but I know he's been approached multiple times to lease his parking lot. You know, real estate changes hands for births, deaths, divorces. That's what happens. Yep. <laughs> okay, yeah. next. Communication. The, the town engineers are, are going to have to communicate regularly and clearly what construction is happening and when. Yeah, to more, the, to more the those town. lighting boards, those light up boards saying it, where, where the construction is going to be between this house, <clears throat> or between this, this house number and this house number for, for, yeah. for, the, ne for the next week. And this what, house for this house number from the next following year. The, the general contractor is the one that is going to be determining what gets built when. Right. It's really out of the control of the town, but we've, we, have to, we have to communicate somehow. This is what's going to happen this day, this week, this month. And I, I think it's critically important that we, we have some kind of a, a point person in town hall that's responsible for getting that information out. Yeah, that it's like a um, a weekly meeting yes, with a weekly meeting with the general contractor with this specific information addresses, and then getting it out via um, via eHop website. Could you use the reverse nine one one to to say Main Street will be closed between here and here for you know from this date to that date? Well, they said they're not going to close. They're not going to ever close. No, it's just going to be painful. Yes. It's going to be spots of it. Mm. Right, but just letting people know what's what's coming <coughs> and when. Mm -hmm. That's why I think the reverse 911 is is a great tool yeah. because that I think so. I gets think everybody. I think it's good if you're signed up for it. If it's like, is it is it everybody? I, I didn't know if it was everybody. I I have gotten them and I never signed up for anything. Mm. The and schools have a separate that are, that one. The schools, yeah, I'm on the school one, landlines. but I don't remember ever getting something. Well, elderly town. people we don't have cell phones. Yeah. Mm. We could expand that and even add a banner on the homepage of um, Hopkinton website, mm -hmm. the town website. <laughs> Our website stinks. I mean, and Madhu's idea of Twitter, I mean, going yeah, no, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Our town Facebook page and Twitter yeah. has been very good about updating road closures for snow and weather right. and stuff. So right. Maybe. They use that to also say that construction is happening. Yeah. So. yeah town Twitter. Is it, could we suggest some type of a tax abatement program during the construction? Nice one, though. For the business. For the businesses. Yeah, for the affected. businesses. Good one. I mean, if, if they lose yeah. 10 or 15 percent of their business they during construction, that, that, yeah. that could put a lot of businesses under. Yep. Good. Good one. I'll bring that one up tomorrow. Good one. And um, when you were saying communication, I was also thinking um, that this is just an idea that um, the town could. Um, could do joint advertising for all the town businesses such and such are still open during construction and on a fairly regular basis just saying and you know uh, see here for you know parking instructions or how to get there you know during this yeah. particular yeah. time period if they have Excellent. Some, and related to zoning if they have some more events like the the scavenger hunt, elf, uh, elf on the shelf scavenger hunt that d encourages people to go to different businesses. At respect, even when the construction yeah. is going on, th that's in December. But when the construction is happening, if we can time something at that time. Mm -hmm. so. Could could we have the construction um, time restricted so that weekends 
businesses are open longer and they, they attract customers, but nothing is happening during that time so that there's no disruption. Well, one good thing is nobody's, the people in Hopkins are not here in August anyway. Muffin Cafe's here. No, I didn't say It's a no, great no, time to drive that around. There's, there's lots of people. Fewer <laughs> people. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I don't sorry. think construction is going to happen during the weekend. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to be a Monday through Friday sure. construction schedule. Yeah, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Businesses open. Okay. How to get to them. Um, okay, good. I mean, we've talked about business hours in the past. I mean, our businesses don't stay open late because people aren't <laughs> frequenting yeah. right. the stores. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I don't know that we have to give them additional hours mm. to we operate. We don't because there are, we, we discovered that there are no restrictions on the hours. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. None whatsoever. Okay. So they can, so they can, they stay, can stay open, open. as open. late as they want. Okay. Um, but but they will only do so, of course, but if there I are think customers. Your, your point of saying may, maybe create some evening That's things to, 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 to activities to, 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 to draw pull people. Create. I don't. Know. Activities but. to drive business. Okay, good. Anything else? I'm not sure any of these are really zoning related. <laughs> I know, but you know, it's, it's pretty signs. hard to filter <laughs> that in my brain. <laughs> Brainstorm things that are only related to zoning. <laughs> uh, good. I think we have a good list. Now I need two volunteers. For what? Ron. To develop more ideas by talking to people outside of this room. <laughs> Okay. Anybody want to help Ron? Well, we have, if, if Carol sells the uh, <laughs> accessory, <laughs> well, the accessory, accessory, accessory use. Well, like, <laughs> did you, you brought it right down to one, t one sentence. I thought that was, that was perfect. Yes, yeah, so, I'll. Okay. Well, you're welcome to use my speech. <laughs> no, I'm already up front the entire time. Okay, so, John, are you, yeah, are you volunteering? Okay. <laughs> okay, so the idea being, um, get some other input from um, local, the downtown businesses, from the chamber directly, from um, uh, make sure that, you know, these ideas are shared with town manager and other groups potentially working on this issue. Um, and that they know that we are working on this issue and that anything related to zoning that we wanna get on town meeting, um, please, you know, they should send it our way um, and just, you know, of course, by the end of January, <laughs> because that'll be the well, deadline. Well, can I take a picture of your list? Because actually, yeah. I'm going to bring up the tax abatement one tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Take a picture of it. I was also going to type it up and send it right away by email tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, but, okay, that's fine. And, uh, um, but if you don't trust me to get it done, <laughs> that's fine, too. You can take a picture. Um, good, good, good. I think that was good. Um, any last things on any of these three topics? Okay. Not yeah. this, this topic, uh, separate. If something in the special town meeting gets passed, let's say, for instance, the legacy farm thing, to convert that private road into public road, do we have to start looking at zoning updates for related to those changes as well for the coming months? I would say if the Legacy Farms North Road does not mm -hmm. get accepted as a, as a road, um, then we do need to put that on our agenda. Okay. So that's what I have on the work plan right now is that it's going to come up pending okay. what happens there. So um, our next meeting is December 19th. Um, but I'm sure I'll see all of you at town meeting next mm -hmm. Monday. Um, Except Rhea. Except Rhea. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> And, uh, um, you know, yes, w uh, a lot of our agenda is going to depend on that. Okay. Yeah, so, thanks. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of November 21st? Those of you who were there? I um, thought they were lovely. Yeah, I thought they were <laughs> lovely as well. Um, I thought there was one change that I, it was probably not critical. It was, it was more of a just, I don't even know if I so highlighted it. So there's one, it. one thing that, um, making the the parking half was arbitrary and should be done with su 
subjective discussions for new uses. Do you think that's something we should be talking about too for like the next couple of meetings or whatever? Because, or because it, it is on your new work plan items. It is there, but it's have not. Have you gotten any feedback on on you know being taped on this or anything like that? No. You're talking about making downtown parking more restrictive. Well, the the problem is is it's causing the issue. I and there was no again, there was I, no tie into what what it was for. It, you know we have these we have um, guidelines for uses, but if you just take those arbitrarily and ch put them in half, it doesn't really improve anything. It's it it, it yeah. makes it crazy. But I I still okay I I probably so shouldn't get into the discussion of the topic itself. But right. but but. I do think we will discuss parking in general as a part of the downtown corridor project. I don't think that we can make substantive changes to anything by the end of January that could go to a town yeah. meeting this year. Right. And so I, uh, regarding parking in general and our, and our formulas or things like that, because the downtown corridor project kind of overrides any Changes, changes right to downtown now. parking. That's what I'm saying. Right. Okay, so based on that, I would like to delay the general parking discussion until after the, the end of quarter. January. And it, after the quarter project, I'm assuming. And after the quarter project. Right. We, can, we can discuss it sooner than that, of course, right. but it really won't have any impact until after the quarter project. Right? Right. So okay, it, so that was I mean, my rationale for now. General parking, I mean, I'd, I would still like to talk about looking at parking requirements on south street you know south, and south B. street makes sense but downtown yeah downtown, again nothing. it because of the downtown corridor project it just doesn't make any sense right now i don't think people can even conceive right. of it i'm just pointing out yeah. it is on your new work plan items list on the it is the it is but so it like, is I'm not necessarily are we doing this right now no. what are we doing <laughs> no yeah the way the minutes were written it didn't didn't necessarily go through what we considered high priority low priority mm -hmm. so but that is on the work plan um so okay so that so that's one thing and then you're saying it's south street it was that do we Discuss South so Street parking. The part. This is the change to the minutes that I'm suggesting. At is the that public here. is oh, that it, at there, no. on page four? There's one called parking requirement, and it really is parking requirements by use, and that's separate from a downtown ah. corridor parking requirements, right. which were two separate topics, and they're they're separated on the work plan as well. So I just think it needs to be clarified in the minutes that. So parking requirement by use is what you were suggesting, mm -hmm. um, and um, and that's probably specific to South Street or Industrial A, I should say. Industrial A B. Yeah. So that's also part of the Starbucks conversation, right? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to get into Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> So what would you like to change in the notes? It says, it's on page four near the bottom. It just says parking requirement. And then, yep. you know, and then and the you minutes. Just want to change that to parking requirement by use. By use. Okay. I think would help differentiate it for the minutes, okay. for the purpose of the minutes. Okay, good. Other than that, does anybody have any other changes to the minutes for John? Okay. So can I have a motion? To accept with with the small changes noted. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, opposed. Abstentions. I'm abstaining. Abstains. Okay. That's uh, Carol and Ron abstained. Um, okay. So good. Now um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> oh, everybody jump in for that one. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed, Aye. abstentions. John moved. moved. Oh, Carol moved. Uh, Sundar seconded. And, you, you know, everybody it. else as well. Uh, <laughs> okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice meeting, Mary. Very Thank you very much. Thank that was you. a lovely pen. <laughs> it flowed. And we'll see you on the 19th, if not before.